All right, Charlie, we're back here at Stevo's. Welcome back to the Belly Up Podcast, presented by Fleet Farm. Fleet Farm. We love it. Folks, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do this without you. Miles, it's another beautiful day in this beautiful dive bar. You know what I like to say, Charlie? What do you like to say, Miles? Another day, another beer. Another day, another beer. Another day, another beer. Another year, another tear. Another beer, another... That's where this ends. That's where my Another poetry. deer. Another beer, another deer. Yeah, we should write a poem at some point. We should take team a poem. Uh, great beer signs in this bar, I will say. Just want to set the scene. Some amazing neon signs here. And also, I love seeing this. A urinal trough. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I walked in and I said, yes. That's what I said, too. I don't know why we're not doing troughs anymore. Is it probably because they're super unsanitary? Or? I, I think it's more people don't, you know, you get up there and you hang it. And I think people are a little shyer these days. You yeah. know, it's not like the old days, you know, where locker rooms were just like, uh, you know, communal showers, you know. Yeah. Kids these days don't know the beauty of a of a communal shower anymore. That's a you weird know? way to start off a podcast, <laughs> but you know we wouldn't have done it if there wasn't a trough in this beautiful dive bar here at Stevo's. And I think I'm going to try and convince Anne to let me put a trough in the house somewhere. <laughs> that would be great. Because like, we have, so at some point we're going to finish off our basement. You yeah, know? and I'm thinking because we got a wet bar down there it could be good to install a trough downstairs fantastic i am on board with this <laughs> if if ann is on the fence and you're like all right let's phone a friend i'm gonna go out on a limb and say she's gonna be pretty on the fence about <laughs> it. and by on the fence i mean it's not happening but you, you might you might want to uh figure this out before the wedding day yeah. you know just so you there's no surprises you know <laughs> yeah. after the fact yeah hey honey we're happily married get back to Fargo after the honeymoon and go I'm installing a trough you guys show up after the honeymoon there's just a trough on your front doorstep <laughs> she's like the hell is that I was like well while yeah, we were in we Hawaii got the ring doorbell you know that shows the front door and there's this guy carrying this big package she's like what is that you know you're gonna love it honey yeah it's like uh, you know that might have been I think it's a prop for a video I, we're doing a trough video so that actually would be a funny sketch actually it's just you and i standing at the trough and we're just talking back and forth you know yeah and the whole time is just dick jokes hey, um maybe we do that after this yeah. two guys at the trough two guys one trough <laughs> yeah. i think we shoot that we shoot this after that's the next iteration of this podcast you that's know? it's it. like the side podcast <laughs> two guys one trough belly up to the trough <laughs> Wiener up to the <laughs> trough. <laughs> hang, hang out at the trough. Yeah. That's it. Something like that. Yeah. Um, but nothing. It reminds you where we came from, you know? Yeah. In my mind, peeing in a trough is a lot like just peeing out in the woods as if our as our ancestors did. Uh, yeah. And uh, it really makes you feel primal, in my it, opinion. It does. It does. You know, Plus, it, you don't have to aim as good. You don't. You don't. Uh, how do you think horses feel about that? You know? That'd be like a bunch of horses just pissing in a bubbler, you know? Uh, what's bubbler? Bubbler. It, like a water. Oh, a water fountain. Yeah, but, oh, okay. it, but it's called a bubbler. Uh, but no, think about that. Horses drink out of a trough, you know, and we're just pissing in it. I know. You know, eat out of it, you know? Yeah, there's some saying out there about not peeing where you play something like that what is it don't some, shit where you eat kind yeah, of something like that don't pee where you play i like don't pee where you play <laughs> something like that i don't know uh, um anyways but we were going to talk about something this what is what it? i want to talk about we were talking about this on the phone the other day and and i thought okay. it would be a great oh, idea yeah, yeah. this is a fantastic idea so you know how people sponsor nascar you know that's a thing yep. that they do we were thinking, what if we sponsored a team, but not a NASCAR team? What no, if no, we no. sponsored? That's, you know, hey, that's so mainstream. Way too mainstream. That's way too on the radar to be sponsoring a NASCAR team. Also way too much money. Also very expensive. <laughs> we were thinking, what's in our budget? We came up <laughs> with a couple ideas. Professional bags team was one. Yes. And then... You know why it seems more affordable to me? Why? There's only two guys... On each team or gals. Yeah. Right? That's one team, right? right? That's the biggest teams that they get. Right. From my understanding. Yep. Can't be that hard. 
Get them some jerseys. Yeah. Get them some bags. Yeah. Get them some drinks. And maybe and that's a, what it's all about. Maybe a board. Yeah. It's not like we have to worry about the intricacies of the mechanical devices inside a race car. No. I mean, we don't have to worry. Hopefully, we don't have to worry about putting anyone's lives in our hands. No. Or our pocketbooks. Miles and I are not in a financial position to sponsor Nas. <laughs> yes. You know? Give them uh, the Nas. Yeah. Do they do that in NASCAR? I think you can do Nas know. in NASCAR. Is think, it Nas? Yeah, I think so. It's not Nas. That's that's like the rapper, I think, is Nas. <laughs> yeah, it's Nas. Okay. Well, Nitric no. Oxide. Nitrous Oxide. Nitrous Oxide. Yeah. Yeah. We're, car, we're clearly car guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's also another reason. <laughs> yeah. So um, we can, if, if you've got a bags team out there, reach out to Miles. And no, I. no, 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 no. I apologize to anyone who thinks that we're going to sponsor it. You got to be good. All right. We're Show not us gonna, what you got. You got to be on the ACL. You got to be on the American Cornhole League professional tour. We're, hey, we're going bigger going home. None of the rinky dink, hey, we play bags once a week type of guy. We're looking yeah. for a good team. Miles, we're looking to invest. Charlie. This is an investment. It Someday is an investment. our children are going to be able to take over this team. That's true. That's true. We'll, we'll be we'll be like, or what if we do it like this? What if we do it like, you know how the Packers have shareholders? Yes. Like, like they're all shareholders. What if we start up a bellied up shareholders to yes. sponsor? The, I mean, with all these people, look at all these people in this bar. If we got all of them to chip in, we would have the most dominating cornhole team ever. That is true. Unlimited funds. Unlimited Everyone funds. Everyone just pays 20 bucks. To yeah, go towards the shares. We're gonna we're gonna be flying around our cornhole team on a private jet. To oh the my gosh, that's no, no. Even at miles, even if we could afford a private jet, I think we should just soup up, soup a up RV. like an RV. Yeah, for sure. And then hey, we'll wrap it in our faces, <laughs> and we're gonna make them wear jerseys with our faces on it. It just says bellied up. Yeah. Should, what if it's what if. Half oh, of it's our face, the front, and then on the back, one the one guy says Charlie, and the other one says Miles, yeah. like the juicy sweatpants from Victoria's Secret. You remember those? <laughs> like girls had the writing on the yeah. bar. Yeah, and I think the shirts though. The front should just be the front of us at the bar, and the back <laughs> should just be like the back of us. Yes, <laughs> that'll be great. Absolutely, dude. I think we're on to something here. What? Uh, yeah, we so we roll up to tournaments in a souped-up RV with our thing plastered on the side. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna be a little bit like an owner, like Jerry Jones. You I wanna... think I'm gonna be the hot shot. I'm gonna need to do interviews afterwards. <laughs> I'm be wearing a suit with a bolo tie and a cowboy hat. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to be dialed in during this. I'm going to request box seats, even though they probably don't have them. <laughs> All I want is just a scissor lift to put me up higher to make it look like I'm in a box. It's just literally you want a scissor lift sitting in an actual cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> box <laughs> box seats. seats. There we go. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, we have binoculars, you know, like they do up in yeah. the... <laughs> Oh, it's going to be great. Every I'm time excited. we want a drink, it's just all of a sudden <laughs> like in the middle of the thing. I mean, and it's beeping too. Beep. <laughs> Let's it's, do it. And we only do it when the other team's thrown, you know? So if you are interested in this bellied up uh, being part of a, of a community owned bags so league. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm community owned bags team. Oh, be honest. If, if the Packers started the whole shareholder system now, yeah. it would be called fraud. <laughs> what? How we can might you be, say that, dude? Who do you mean? How can you say that? I am an, I am an hey, owner. Hey, here's a share that is absolutely worth nothing. Oh, except it's only worth what people are willing to pay, and I gladly pay. But if the team gets sold to a private owner... You get zero dollars back. What, did you read that the fine print? Fra- that did would you read be the fraud. fine print? What does it say? First of all, that would never happen. I'm just I, saying. Mark my words. The Packers will never be sold to I'm one person. I'm just saying person. it's not actually a share. Uh, says who, dude? Says the piece of paper that means nothing that have you, you get. Okay. Have you read the piece of paper? And if it means nothing, then why do you believe I've read some articles it? about it. It's, have you? It's basically worthless. No, it's worth what you're willing to pay for it. No. It's like a piece of no, art. You can't sell like that. A piece you of can't artwork. sell your share to anyone. 
What's that? I don't think you can sell your share. Why would I want to sell my share, dude? (laughs) Are you kidding me? It's one of my most prized possessions. All I'm saying is if we're going to do the Packer route, we got to be careful to not get caught with fraud. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Because it it flew back in the day, you know, with the mafia and all that (laughs) shit you guys had going on. Well, you know, we did. uh, Al Capone has had many houses in Wisconsin. (laughs) There was a reason for that. Al Capone's biggest racket was the public shares of the uh, Green Bay Packers. That was I don't think Capone... uh, I don't anything know anything to do with about that. Al Capone, so clearly I don't. <laughs> yeah. All I know is we just got to be careful not to commit share fraud. I don't know what that's called, but uh, this is I don't know. Let's call it a Kickstarter. That's what they call it these yes. days. <laughs> there you go. It's not fraud. It's a Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna start a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll figure I mean, this talk out. Talk about a racket. GoFundMe turned into it from people donating to good causes to people being like, hey, you know, I'd like, I saw this once. Hey, I'm looking to buy a new guitar. I'm going to do a GoFundMe. Well, I mean, I think there there's enough fine print out there that we can write this to our, um, to make it yeah. so everyone's happy. And I, look, I don't want to, if anyone donates, we, we uh, give them something. We give them a certificate that tells them they're a shareholder in our uh, bag league, in our bag team. Yeah, bag team. Bag team. Yeah. So there it is. If there's a professional cornhole team out there, though, that would like to sell to us, you got to let us know. Yeah. And we want to buy it with a coupon also. Yeah. We need some sort of, you know. Well, yeah. We need a two for at least. Yeah, two for one. You, yeah. You, we both buy, we get one of you get. Oh, no, that's not how that. Anyway. We'll figure it out. We'll um, figure it out. I want to be the hot shot in the cornhole league. I want to, I want it like uh, where I'm the loudmouth uh, owner and then you're always having to cover for me. Yeah. You know, I want that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. So, yeah, what Miles meant to say, it's like an improv game. Yeah. Miles is like, you, you know. Uh, I like there, there would be a whole thing where Miles insists on we play with weighted bags or something, yeah. you know, like, you know, uh, guys, what are you I'd doing? Like a, I'd like a I'd like a shot clock out there I yeah. start saying shit like that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Shot clock. That'd Whoever's the commissioner. I imagine the commissioner of a cornhole league is like his name is uh, Brian or something. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't like how Brian's running this show. What kind of operation is he running? So what Miles means to say is that he doesn't like it as it currently is, but he has a lot of suggestions he will give. You know, that's it. I'm just out there with a bucket yeah. and a mop. How can you run on a bush light at a cornhole event? This is bullshit. And I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> There's Miller Lite. There's Lineys. We got uh, it. So, so I think we just found our new dream. I think we did. I think we did. Let us know if you guys uh, let us know if you you want to support it. Reach out to us. Let's just get a tester. See well, you. and maybe what we could do is do that. If you want to share, we could do a shirt. We could do a shirt that oh, says I'm a shareholder. I'm a shareholder of the bellied up cornhole team. Yeah. We send that out with a certificate. Yeah. We'll make it. We'll be on like a nice glossy piece of cardstock too. Uh, like, some frameable. Some and frameable. Then, that will go towards us someday buying a cornhole. Honestly, team. we hey, we got to make sure in the fine print we put the, this. It could be now between now and the next 80 years. <laughs> and if it's past 80 years, then we're just not going to buy one. <laughs> yeah. If this has gone 80 years, chances are we're not vampires. I'm a shareholder in the bellied up cornhole team. We, we'd probably be safe saying 60, given the amount of uh, yeah, beer I mean, we drink. I was trying to do it. I was. It was one of those things where clearly I'm going to go before you do. And so I wanted to, like, <laughs> put all the burden on you. Yeah. You'll have to figure it out. You know, that's so nice of you. That's, that's a very future kind. Charlie problem, not a future <laughs> Miles problem, because I'm going first. Well, you never know. That's the thing with life is yeah. live, every, live in the present. Don't blink. Don't blink. That's all right. Uh, all right. We're going to take some calls and uh, get after it here. Let's do it. Hello. Who do we got on the line? Well, this is Paul. How's this, Miles? What was your name? Sorry. Paul, is this Miles? It is Miles. Charlie's here, too. How's it going, bud? How are you? Oh, Charlie's there, too. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing real good. Where, Where are you calling from? What you doing? 
Uh, I'm calling from the great state of Minnesota. I live kind of by St. Cloud. Okay, so you're a little bit west of us right now. We are in Crystal, Minnesota oh. at Stevo's, so not too far. Okay, I'll uh, put the hammer down. I'll be there in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really are putting the hammer down if that's the case. <laughs> Uh, yeah. well, why don't you belly yeah. up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Well, at, at the moment right now, I'm sitting in traffic on 94. Oh. So I got plenty of time to talk with you fellas. Okay. Well, what do you got on your mind? Well, I got a, you know, I'm pretty sure you probably got this before, but the Minnesota night um, and, and, the, and the, the Midwest goodbye. Okay. I am... Probably the worst person. Like, if you say goodbye to me, I'm going to keep you there another hour. Okay. Well, let's dive into that. Is, like, wait, tell is that me. a bad thing? No, 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 no. no, no. You are doing <laughs> it right, sir. You're doing it right. But I would like to dive in. It sounds like you You said you, that'd be there an hour. What? Oh, why why sure. do you think you feel the need to keep them there for longer? Well, I mean, part of it is because uh, I know it makes my wife mad when we don't leave somewhere. Um, you know, that's that's part of it. And that's but, also no, just no, that's love, dude. If you yeah. are in love, uh, yeah, you, can... you live to irritate the other one. So that's what it's all about. I'm conditioning her. I'm conditioning her to, uh, you know, accept the fact that we can't just stop in and say hi. Cause well, that would be rude. You're saying hi. Yeah, yeah. You gotta stay for quite a while. Overstay the welcome. Is she from this area then too, or is she from outside the Midwest? No, no. She is. She's just one county over. You know. Okay. Just one county over. They must have had some weird in the water over there that she's not a fan <laughs> of the Midwest goodbye. You know. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is, oh, go ahead. is it the same when you are hosting the party? Do you also, are you one of the guys when someone's like, well, I suppose, are you one of the ones that, giving them a beer, trying to make them stay as long as possible? Oh, no, we're we're keeping them there. Uh, if you're we're, going we're over to keeping them, keeping them entertained. If you're going over to his house for a party, you might as well pack a, a night bag because... You're going to be going oh, home in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you're bringing a couple. Yep. Pack the PJs. Now, what's your tactic to keeping them there longer? Uh, did you hear? That, that's kind of, did you hear this or did you hear uh, that? Okay, or, so you're uh, saying that if you want to continue the Midwest goodbye, all you got to say is, did you hear, da-da-da-da-da, followed yeah, it, by anything. Oh, it can be the stupidest thing in the world, and, and they'll say it because they want to know it, you know? That's true. I'm already intrigued because it feels like something <laughs> like, what do you got? Did, did you hear something? It seems like you did. Yeah, let's, in fact, let's. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let's do a mock here. Let's try okay. it out right now. So Miles and I are trying to get oh, off. I can't wait. Miles and I are trying to get off the phone call. Well, I suppose it's about that yeah, time. We got to get going. I suppose. Yeah. Oh, Charlie, uh, did did you hear that uh, John down the road? He got a ten pointer yesterday. No. no way. John got a ten pointer. Do you got pictures? Yeah. Let All me right. see oh, them yeah, pictures. Yeah, we got. Yeah, he had him on his trail camera for like four days straight, and he finally got him. Oh, okay. my gosh. Look well, at that the, rack. Pull, yeah, pull those photos. Look at the body on him. Wow. Even the body's big. Yeah. Now, do you get a clean yeah, shot on that one? Yeah, old deer. You know that. Oh, yeah. Do you get a clean shot? Uh, it was behind a little tree, but he uh, he, he made it. Okay. Did Go he have to track it at it. all after a shot, or was it pretty much browning down? No. You know, you guys know John. He's a dead guy. <laughs> yeah. After and done. You know, don't tell John yeah. we asked that. Yeah, okay. I now feel dumb <laughs> yeah. for asking that. Well, well I, suppose. I suppose, you know, it's about that. No. What? What was that? Did, did you hear about the Vikings, though? <laughs> oh, oh no, what about the Vikings? I, You know, well, I'm a I Packers fan. But... But yeah, it can... That Midwest goodbye can just keep going. Well, let's and keep it going. Nice thing because you, you said you something keep, about the Vikings. Yeah, now I'm intrigued. I was going to leave, and now I'm waiting to hear what you have to say. Yeah, what about the Vikings? Yeah, yeah. Fill your whiskey two thirds full, and let's go. Okay, okay well, well, we got it. We got a little drink there. So now tell me, as a Packers <laughs> fan, what about the Vikings? 
No, I, I don't follow football. I'm just trying to keep the conversation alive. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, well I all right. So hold on. So, my Did, dad always told me if you can't if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, you got to baffle them with bullshit. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm really good. At. Will oh. you please say that again for me one more time? Yes. Uh, if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, you got to baffle them with bullshit. And that's my new life motto. We're gonna put that baby on a shirt. <laughs> that's that on is... a t-shirt. Your dad always said that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Good man. Good man. Hey, did you hear about uh, what's going on over in Alexandria? Oh, I, I, I heard something, but did, what did you hear? Yeah, I heard they're having trouble with the snow plows <laughs> that they might not be able to get out in time. This oh, time of year, that so. is unacceptable. Yeah, yeah that's it's, unacceptable. I mean, <laughs> this is the, the city's whole job is to make sure those babies are rocking and rolling. I can't believe it. You know, I got to talk to the folks over at the DPW over there in Alexandria. Jeepers, cripes. But we know they're doing they're working hard to get it. They'll fixed. get it it's fixed. Just, I got confidence in the Alex. Alexandria DPW crew. <laughs> don't don't think for a second yeah. I don't. They'll figure it out. Yeah. 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 Well Well, I suppose. So I guess getting back to the original topic, is is it bad of me to keep it going or should I should I cut it off at like a time limit? No, you cut it off when you feel like cutting it off. And I can tell you got that <laughs> gift of the, the gab, the brilliance of the BS. I don't think you're going to be cutting it off anytime soon. So you go as long as your heart no, desires. They, they, yeah, they can keep slapping their knees and say, well, I got to get going, but I'm going to keep you there. Yeah, you keep going until they got bruises on their knees from slapping it because they're ready to leave. <laughs> yeah. You just keep going. Yeah. yeah. You, but you got to be careful, okay. though, because during here's another thing to keep in, in mind. What they're probably going to do after about eight slaps of the knees and a whelp, I better head out. They're going to go, oh, crap, I got to use the bathroom. They're going to go to the bathroom. They're going to uh-huh. do the old Irish goodbye and just leave without you even knowing. And you're going to be sitting there for a half hour waiting for them. And they're going to be like, oh, where'd Tim go? I think he already left. So you got to be careful well, with that. Yeah, so I got a little problem with that because usually we hang out in the shop and we don't got a bathroom in there. So the bathroom is outside and it's, yeah. it's that much closer to the truck then. You got to you gotta watch out for the oh. fade move. Yeah. You walk outside and just fade away. Watch yeah. out for Timmy Tinkles. He'll, uh, he'll uh, you know, do a pump fake. He'll call an audible. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the urinal, take yeah. a hard cut to his car, and get the hell out of there. So you got to watch out for it. Yeah, okay. what, what you got to do then, you got to install fl- motion detecting floodlights outside. Yeah. So when he goes out there, you can flip him catch, on. Catch him red handed. Yeah. yeah. You can catch him red handed and be uh, like, what are you doing out there? You said you were taking a leak. Get back in here. Did you yeah. hear? Let him know someone's watching at all times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a speaker connected to that, too. What's that? I said, I guess I never thought of the motion active floodlight. That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah. And and have yourself a big speaker up there, too. Like, find an old tornado (laughs) siren and retroactive it to, like, your phone so you can talk to them. Tim. Tim. Timmy Tinkle, where are you going, guy? Oh, it seems like you're trying to get out of here. I got a couple more things I need you to hear about. Outhouse is that way, fella. Well, well you I suppose. Oh, thank you. No, you're the best. You're, how's traffic doing, by the way? Uh, we're uh, we're back up to 60, so I'm, oh, I'm hands-free now if any of the law enforcement listen. Yes, as, as you should wink. be. Yep. Very, very good. Got to be hands-free. There you go. Uh, well, well I suppose. I suppose. Or did you guys hear it? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> hey, You're thanks. a veteran. Yeah. You're a veteran. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I don't I mean maybe I should find a different go to line than did you hear? No, 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 no. no, no. no. You got it right. In fact, that's no. a t shirt right that's... there too. Did you hear? <laughs> there yeah. you go. Yeah. Well, I, can I get some royalties out of that then? Yeah, sure. Oh, he's a businessman, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> Miles will uh, hook you up with that. Yeah, we'll have our guys talk yeah. to your guys. How's yeah. that sound? <laughs> that sounds wonderful, guys. All okay. Right. Well, I suppose. Well, I appreciate the, I appreciate you guys taking my call. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you calling in. We really do. 
<laughs> you guys have a wonderful day now. Okay. All right. Watch out for deer. You too. Tell your mom I said hi. All right. Hey, do you need directions before you go? Did you hear they got a new app directions? for directions? Did you hear about that? Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a fun it's interactive thing. Is it? What's yeah. it called? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's like a car with a smiley face on it. Oh. Did you hear about that? <laughs> did you hear I about that? Know. No, you didn't. Well, <laughs> what if he just hung up and <laughs> did the Timmy fade <laughs> he on did us? The, he did the Tim, Timmy tickle. No, no, I'm still here, boys. Okay. okay. I'm still here. You ain't going to get rid of me that easy. I was going to say, All you right. say you're a master at the uh, Midwest goodbye, but you're talking to two uh, experts you know, at it as well. Yeah, we, so I think, yeah. we're in a, I think we're in the well, classic the Midwest the standoff. We're in a Midwest standoff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, in it, well, that's three ways, though. No, that's a Mexican standoff. It's okay. three people. Oh, jeez. Right. Well, I suppose. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to go take a leak outside. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. You. Well, I suppose. What, what do you guys think about the? Uh, no, we're not the, falling the for it this time. <laughs> we're not falling for it. <laughs> All yeah, right, man. watch well, for, for deer coming. now. Yeah, you make sure you set the hook good on them walleyes. Okay, let them run. Open the bail. We'll see you soon. Yeah, field drag. Let's go. All right, that away. See you now. Don't horse Thanks, her. Guys. All right, bye bye. Yeah. Thought that was going to be the whole podcast. I think we were caught in a loop there. <laughs> we were we were caught in a we loop. We were caught in the Midwest <laughs> loop. Um, the West World. Because no one wanted to be the one to give up. Dude, that and, would be at Midwest World. Yeah, you Midwest know? World. Just caught in the Midwest. Goodbye. Just, you yeah, know. Everything, um, every day starts the same. Yeah. Saying, well, I suppose. I suppose. Did you hear? Oh, good guy. Good, good guy. Good though. guy. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know that uh, you know that guy's experience. You can just tell he's you old, can tell. he was a wily old vet, as I think they call it. He's been around the around the deal. He's seen a couple Midwest goodbyes in his day. He has. Well, he has. I suppose. I suppose. We'll Time another for another caller. caller. Yeah. Hello, who do we got on the line? Hey, this is Josh from Massachusetts. Josh, Josh, Massachusetts. How do you spell Massachusetts? Oh, uh, you know, it's a great question. <laughs> and they have to say a couple more letters. Yeah, that sounds good. So what's uh, on your mind today, fella? Uh, just uh, getting ready to head out of work and um, figured I'd try, try my luck. And I'm, I'm glad I got you guys. I need some advice here. Um, so my fiance and I recently bought a house. And, you know, in Massachusetts, we don't get quite the winters that you guys get, but it's still something to deal with. And I was wondering your thoughts, pros and cons on a snowblower versus an ATV with a plow. Oh, well, you called into the right podcast did because indeed. I have an ATV. I have a side by side with the plow. Of course you do. And Charlie's got okay. a snowblower. I got a snowblower. Yep. So this is the clash of titans here. It is. So, Miles, I'll let you uh, go first with your preferences. Now, the beauty of a side-by-side. Now, I'm not necessarily, you know, ATV is a lot of times a four-wheeler, as we would call them. Yeah. Um, but if you've got a mm-hmm. side-by-side with a cab, you can turn on the heat and it gets pretty toasty in there. Sometimes all you need is just a T-shirt while you're moving snow. So that's the number one pro Ooh. in my mind when it comes to getting an ATV and a plow. And to piggyback on Miles, you know, it, it, let's say, y- you know, you're at a loss for a date with a special someone. You really turn it into an event. You know, you say, hey, what do you say we go plow, you know, and, she, <laughs> you know, she's going to be like, what? And then you're going to you're going to say, come with me. She's going to be like, outside, it's freezing out and snowing. And you'll be like, yeah, hang I on. I thought you wanted to plow. Yeah. And then you 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 take her out to the side by side. You open it up. You got 
some nice wine there. You know, you got uh, a cheese Ooh. board with cheese curds yeah, and everything. Yeah, you can double it up. You got some nice romantic music hey, going on in new there. new definition of a double date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is. You're right on a there. date with your snow plow and your old ball and chain. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Just don't call well, our old that's ball that's... and chain in the deal, unless that's the relationship you have. Does do you to Ann, do you call Ann to where are you, hey, you're the old ball and chain? Does Ann call you the old ball and chain? Or does she call I, you like the concrete shoes or something? I mean, I'm probably she does, but I definitely say it in front of her and she gets a laugh about a quarter of the time. <laughs> so Yeah, I'd probably get the same reaction there. Yeah. yeah. Once in a while I catch her in a good mood, she'll think it's Funny. Yeah. Yeah. But most of right, the time, right, exactly. Yeah. You might so want to call her honey or defend, sweetie. You were supposed to defend a snowblower and you just defended my side. <laughs> I know. I, I just thought of it. Because, <laughs> you know, but he, I'll tell you this I like using a snowblower. Um, you know, I, I grew up a shovel guy. Like we had my grandpa's old mm-hmm. uh, snowblower, and my dad said you can only use it if it's over a fist of snow. So we'd bring out one of the younger kids to put their fist in the snow, you know, so we could use it. But we were typically shovel a shovel family growing up. But then I got myself a nice snowblower, and boy, when you get a nice one, it it really makes a difference. Um, it, the the thing is, the big trouble spot for me is the end of the driveway. You know, when it gets all like you got mm-hmm. the cars going, you got the street plows, like really packing in the yeah. end of your driveway. Yep. And in those moments, yeah. I would like a nice side by side. And me. I tell you what, you know, you're in the Midwest when you got a big hump of snow at the end of your driveway that you got to just ram over every time you go into your driveway. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's a buildup from the snow plows and all that. And you just at some point it becomes too tall of a task yeah. to get rid of it. You so just, all you got to do is just put her in four wheel and just launch over the end of the driveway snow hump. That snow hump is is a twofold, though. So when it's there, it's actually a nice speed bump for others driving into your driveway. And there is going to come a time in winter when you need some therapy. You know, and you need some cheap therapy. Therapists are expensive, but you get out there and you crack off a piece of that snow at the snow hump at the Satisfying. bottom of your driveway. So, oh, and then you get one of them nice metal shovels and just and then that pulls up another chunk. Oh, you're going to feel like so much better at the end of the day. So you I are. think the answer to your question is, is unfortunately, my guy, you're going to want both. You're going to want both. You know, I I was thinking that's where this was going. Yep. Yeah. So and hey, I'm not opposed to it. You yeah. know, I thought we would have differing opinions, Charlie B. It turns out we're, we're more, more similar. Yeah. All this time at the same bar uh, top is, you know, we're kind of melding our 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 deal here. You a know, little bit. the side by side with the plow and the uh, uh, snow blower is just same church, different pew. Same church, different pew. You know, yeah. and get yourself a we're nice all, we're all hard believers. metal shovel too. A yes. nice one. I like want that. It to be in, I'll have to invest in your shovel. Yeah, I I'll definitely do that. Um, Charlie, I wanted to just share something with you. Uh, yeah. I was in the same awful place as you when Miles spoiled Top Gun for you um, <laughs> a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, what happened? A couple years ago. Well, when the the first of the new Star Wars came out, so I don't know, 2014, 15, something like that. My buddy and I, yep. So my buddy and I are in line at a convenience store getting ready to go to see the new Star Wars. And the guy behind us hears us talking about it and he goes, Hold on, hold oh, on, hold on. Spoiler alert, new- everybody. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Okay, now go. Yeah, it's seven, it's seven years later, I don't know. But so the guy behind us is just like, oh, you guys are going to see the new Star Wars? You know, it sucks. Han Solo dies. <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay, whoa, dude, I haven't seen it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I can't make this up. Hey, well, you've had enough time at this point. Yeah, that is true. But it was, <laughs> we, we were on our way to the theater. And this guy just tells us like the main... At oh, that moment, you moment wish you had we one of those. Good. That moment, you wish you had one of those Men in Black memory deleters. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, be nice. uh, yeah. I know that would have been great. 
just oh. snap back on. Yeah, you're, um, you're only. Well, hey guys, I, I. <laughs> no, no, go. Oh no! After you, I insist. Oh hey, what what a nice guy. Um, oh. I was just gonna say I um I found you guys recently and I've listened to all the episodes while I'm working and Miles, my favorite OAR album of all time is also Thirty Fourth and Eighth. Let's go, <laughs> baby! A fellow Thirty Fourth and Eighth. I I recently. Oh my god, 34th and 8th is just I could listen to that on repeat forever I think I found it in I don't know, over 10 years ago And I still haven't gotten sick of that album I absolutely love it Well, and you're in OAR country, aren't they from Maryland? You're kind of around there Yeah Hell Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw them up in uh, Saratoga uh, About a month or two ago It was an amazing show I'm so them jealous I'm so jealous wow. they, Believe it or not, they don't oh, get to Fargo, awesome. North Dakota that often I've only seen them once. No, no kidding. You don't say. Yeah. yeah. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> you guys are really putting it out there in the universe. I have a feeling they'll be playing the Fargo yeah. Theater sometime soon, just yeah, for miles. Hopefully. They're Midwest Fours next next on the on the docket. Well, yeah. it's good to meet another ore head, as I like to call, like I to call us ore heads. <laughs> But uh, you know, I'm more of a rusted root guy myself. Oh, you know, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, well, hey, you know, they're okay too. Yeah, you know what, we Charlie? Don't judge. Charlie, it's a revolution. Man. It is. It is. So get yeah. on it. <laughs> I would just like to reach out my hand. But anyways, it's well, a rusted root we appreciate reference. you calling in. This has been great. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate you know being able to get on. This was awesome, you guys. Uh, again, keep me company while I'm at work, and um, I really love the content that you both do individually and together. So I appreciate it. So good luck finding a snowblower and a side by side. You got an expensive <laughs> yeah, future ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this time, a couple, couple months from now, we'll have both, and uh, maybe oh. I'll call in again. Let you know what I got. Let us know how your double date goes. Too. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely will. Keep you updated on that. All right. Well, we'll see you soon. All right, guys. Hey, uh, tell your aunt I say hi, and I'll get her that casserole dish back. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thanks for calling. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. You too. Yeah. Bye bye now. What a guy. What a guy. Um, it's not very often you get to meet people who know 34th and 8th album by OAR, and like that's what it's all about. I can tell that got you excited. Oh, Miles, we just oh. got Tall Boys delivered. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Really appreciate you. He's yeah. got one too. He's there coming on go. everywhere. Cheers. Bush. There you go. Cheers, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Oh. Uh, well, Charlie, should we take another caller? Uh yeah, I think so. Charlie, I tell you what, it's starting to get a little chilly out there. Chilly Billy. Ch- uh you know what my favorite thing to do when it's cold out? Ice fish. No, go to go to Fleet Farm, then ice fishing. Fleet Farm. We are cold, so we're going there. Guys, it's that time of year again where we grow tired of winter. You tired of winter? Tired of winter? No, winter's just popping off. No, we're getting we're growing tired of winter. Oh, it says we're getting tired of winter there? We are tired of winter. We are allegedly tired of winter. And you know what? We need to embrace it. Yeah, Charlie. that's what I'm saying. Embrace the See, tiredness of winter here I'm on two January steps 12th. ahead of this ad read here. Give that, that. Give that someone special. Some. Give that something special to the one. Sound it out, Miles. Sound it the out. The one you've neglected over the last eight weeks, running around, putting on lots of miles. Yes, it's time to pamper. Your auto. Oh, a little spa. F- an auto spa. I didn't know where we were going with that. Neither for a did I. <laughs> yeah, I like, Tell oh, the pamper who. Oh. Jeez. Uh, we- yeah, so it's time for you to take care of the old automobile. Whoop that sucker up. And Fleet, Fleet Farm. Farm has everything you need and everything you should think about ahead of time, like a new battery, wiper blades, uh, ice scraper, everything yeah. you're going to need. You, you name it. Spoil your baby. <laughs> Take it, Take for, it for a, a wash. wash, too. Um, <laughs> I love it. And your baby, your automobile is going to love you for it. Yeah. So make sure you really get in there, get it clean, change the oil, get some new wiper blades. Because well, what happens in the winter, Charlie, the ice gets on there and the blades get all messed up from trying to. Because we know you're just defrosting and trying to get the ice off that way. So Yeah, I'm on time. People forget about the wiper blades. That's so. true. Guys, and- for all your wiper blade needs, you got to go. 
to Fleet Farm. We love it. When the fish aren't biting in the fish house, I like experimenting with my tippy cow mixes. Make an Oreo with vanilla and chocolate, a creamsicle. I'm going to do that. That's Are you? Yeah, yeah, do it right now. I'm a big Oreo guy, so. Miles is putting an Oreo in a glass right now. I'll take a little Oreo in my glass, Miles. You can also do the creamsicle with the orange cream and the vanilla or the shamrock and chocolate for a shamrock shake thingamabob. I Look was talking that. about that on the last podcast, wasn't I? That I like shamrock shakes. You can get one right now. You don't got to wait till March. No, you don't. Don't even shake that shamrock uh, uh, in March the way they, uh, I forget what I'm saying, but bottom line, drink Tippy Cow. It's a hell of a product. Uh, it goes down that. easy. It goes down easy. Did you pour any of mine? Or no? I did. Yes, give her, you did. Give her a rip. All right. And what do you think, Charlie? I think he, I ripped her good. <laughs> Real good. All so right. You can find Tippy Cow at any uh, liquor store, hopefully around you. You can also find them online. It's just, it's the perfect sweet after dinner drink in my mind. In my family, we do a lot of after dinner drinks, and we're switching to Tippy Cow. Tippy Cow. This is the tipping point for me on the, the tippy tipping cow. point. The tipping point. The tipping point of the Tippy Cow. So get some and enjoy it. You won't be disappointed. Huh? Hello. Who are you? Hello. Who's this? This is Tanner Anderson. Tanner or Taylor? Tanner. Tanner Anderson. How you doing, Tanner? Good. How about you guys? Oh, we we can't complain here. Belly on up to the bar. Tell us wh- where you're from, where you're calling, what you want to know from us, huh? Well, I am from a small town in Minnesota, Cottonwood. Okay. So. All I got to say is, you know, Skull Vikings. Oh, Skull. You know what Skull stands for? So keep on losing. Okay. That's... Says the guy who's having a pretty tough year. All right. All right. All right. You know, <laughs> we'll see what happens with your Vikings. Okay. Unless we've already seen. That's a philosophical statement oh. right there. Oh, okay. So what's well, I got a question for you. Yeah, please. I think this goes more towards Miles. When you walk into a bar and you see pull tabs, how do you know which box to go into? Ooh, oh, that's a good question. Well, so is this bar, because this is a, a little tip. Uh, some bars wait until the end of the night to cross off the ones that have been taken already. Some bars don't ever tell you what's been taken already, and some do them immediately. So the first question is going to be asking that of, hey, are these up to date? The How many of each one's left, right? How many 300s okay. are left? How many? Because sometimes it's they cross them off at the end. Sometimes they cross them off in real time. So that's your first step. Find out is it is the how much is in each box still left on the table. And then you're just going to go off of, you know, risk versus reward. $2 ones are probably going to give you a bigger reward that costs double the $1 ones. And so you really just, it's a, it's really a beautiful dance between you and the box and how many numbers are still left and all that. And uh, so that's what advice I would give. It's like counting cards. Okay. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. But not really at all. <laughs> to a degree. Yeah, but you don't got to be a genius to figure it out. <laughs> you know, like we can figure out a pull top box, Charlie, but I don't think we can figure out counting cards. Uh, you don't you don't know how to count cards? Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm not good at it. I so read a book once. Is, is, that, is that information? I'm pretty good at goldfish. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, does that help you out or do you already know that information? No, that helps me out. I just never know because I see all these people winning and I'm always the one, you know, not winning. Well, that's the thing about pull tab investing is it's always going to look like a failure in the middle. You got to keep buying and buying and buying, investing, 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 and eventually you'll be a winner. You might not make any money, but at some point you're going to be a winner. This is true. Hell yeah. Okay. 
At the end of the day, you just got to have faith that the tabs you pull will pull the cash. Hmm. That's a good saying. That's good advice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Thank we you. appreciate you calling in, man. Yeah. Yeah, and I got one more. Yeah. I can get some advice from you guys. Yeah, sure. What's up? I got a, I got a teenager that's about to be driving soon. Uh-oh, oh, man. And she is absolutely horrible. <laughs> is she? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. She... I, I, I get scared for my life. Does she get it from her mother or from you? I'm going to go with her mother. Okay. Oh, okay. As you do. As well, you do. You knew what you were getting into, though, is all I'm saying. What is she? What is she? What aspect of driving is she the worst at? We'll see if we can give you some tips at the hardest issue she's having right now. Well, the speed limit, braking, stop sign. <laughs> okay. Um, it's pretty much anything. Well, so here's my next question, and I don't mean to be insensitive, but is she blind? <laughs> yeah, I mean, having trouble well, with stop signs. That's, stop signs, speed limits, uh, yeah. can't see the brake. Right. You know, we're we're configuring the issue up. here. Have you tried getting her some glasses? Um, does she, you you may want to. The thing is, she does wear glasses. Oh, it sounds like you need to re-up the, the right prescription. prescription. There yeah. you got it. There you got it. I think that would be number one, don't you think, Charlie? I think that's a very good place to start right there. You know, it, it's winter now, and I do think the number one advice, you know, I was given this advice as a young lad when it comes to how do you drive when it starts snowing. And what I was told is you want to be able to fillet a bluegill in the front seat, you drive slow enough so the person sitting shotgun can fillet a bluegill without giving themselves an accidental circumcision. Okay, so <laughs> well, she doesn't have a problem with that. She goes two miles per hour. Well, oh. you know, so we let's that's a b- building place where we start with that. At least she's not a speed demon. It's easier to speed someone up than it is to slow them down. Yeah, I'll tell you that yeah. much. So you, you got to work with, with what you got. And this is a building block. You build off that. So that's good. That's good. Well, well perfect. I appreciate the advice. Yeah, I don't think we gave you a whole lot there. I mean, Charlie <laughs> loves talking about circumcision. So I was glad yeah. you put that in there. Oofta. Just make sure, make sure you, d- look, you got to make sure she has all the proper things in the car if she's driving in the Midwest and we want a buck knife in the brat holder. Okay. In case she hits a deer, does she know how to clean a deer yet? <laughs> no. Well, she should know how to clean well, a deer before, before she, she even starts driving. You yeah. Get that you know, they used to teach that in driver's ed and they stopped and uh, gosh, darn it. That's a problem. Cause the biggest tragedy on the roads. Well, one of the biggest tragedies on the roads is people leaving warm deer on the side of the deal if they're still steaming there's son some, of a gun there's some good back straps left out there there you know? absolutely is oh yeah yeah so don't it, start start with the basics for god's sakes okay and, and this is coming down to you i hate to say it <laughs> yeah. you cannot complain that is your daughter <laughs> every sir. time you're pointing a finger there's three more pointing right back at you yeah man. this is your daughter so you teach her what's right get her a nice buck knife you know, get find it, find her a deer, and show her how it's done, and uh, make sure she's got ratchet straps. Uh, just to bring that home, two ice scrapers, one for the uh, one for the car, one for the car, the other to scrape the deer <laughs> off the car. You know, so there, wow, good some, point. Yeah. Wow, that's- Yep, Miles. I mean, do you we can keep going something. if you want to. We you can make a stop, or we can keep going. I mean, there's endless advice. Yeah. Hmm. No, that's that's good. No, I like it. I like it. I gotta get her a knife first. It looks like. You know what you gotta do to get her to speed up a little bit? Tell her that it's illegal to go under a certain amount, right? So if the speed limit's forty, say it's illegal to go less than thirty miles an hour, and then she'll believe you. Then she'll go between that 30, oh, 40 mile an hour range. I definitely have tried that already and it doesn't <laughs> okay. work. All right. Yeah. Well, start with the stop <laughs> sign. Once you get the stop sign going, then uh, then it increases that's, speed I, that's from there. That's Jedi level stuff, though. I mean, yeah. trying to figure out a stop sign in the Midwest is. 
Yeah. How many times? What, let me I ask you this. I would try to just avoid. Get the GPS on the on the screen to go. You know, have it go only stoplights because sounds like it's going to be a while before <laughs> she can handle a stop uh, sign. Yeah. When she gets to a Midwest four way stop, how many times are you teaching oh, her to God. wave? How many times have you instructed her to wave to the other person past before she can go? Oh, yeah. They always wave and always give the two finger pop up. Yeah. You got to do them both. You, uh, there's a two wave minimum in the Midwest at every four way stop. <laughs> Ooh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, you guys have been a lot of help. Yeah. Well, no, we get that a lot. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> we do. So good luck to you and good luck to your daughter. And we're all going to buckle up. You said up. we've been a lot of hell, right? That's yeah, been that's, help. Yeah, right? yeah, I didn't emphasize the P at all there. <laughs> Uh, well, tomato, apple, and both red. <laughs> hey, say, did you hear about those self-driving cars? Maybe get her one of those. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I don't know about that now. Yeah, you got two <laughs> options. Yeah, you either teach her how to drive good or you... you... Buy a car that does it for her. That's true. <laughs> That is a very good point. I think I'm going to go with the first one. Okay. okay. Well, well, I suppose. Good, good riddance, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Well, I suppose. I suppose it's about that time. All right. Well, thanks for the advice and thanks for, uh, you know, listening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Appreciate you calling in. Yeah, I hope you don't good. live anywhere near a roundabout, okay? Good luck. Oh, yeah, thank you. All right. All right buckle right. up out there, yeah, folks. Bye. See you now. Charlie, talk to me about the first time you learned to drive. I can't imagine it was a smooth experience. First time I learned to drive, oh, it was moving cars. I had my aunts and uncles over at my grandparents' house, and I was uh, moving the cars. Someone in and had out. to get out. They left the party early, so you had to maneuver some stuff. I was stuff maneuvering or? some cars. That was kind of the first time, you know. Then uh, you, you get comfortable with that. And then you take one, you know, you're kind of valeting for the family. And then you take it around the block. You're like, I shouldn't be doing this. And you shouldn't, you know. But it kind of feels good. Kind of feels good. Yeah. Even if it's winter, you like roll down the window just to get that fresh air blowing just to in. to get it know? going. I kind of knew. I worked at the park and I was the uh, guy driving the golf cart around picking up the trash, <laughs> you know. So I, I uh, kind of knew the basics from that, you know. Yeah. But uh, how about you? When was the first time you learned how to drive a car? <sighs> um, I'm sure it was some, you know, like on a hunting trip or something. Hey, why don't you drive that over here and yeah. this and that. So probably yeah. in the field somewhere or on a, you know. Know, on the gravel road or something and then good, good place to learn and then uh you know i uh my birthday was in march so in in north dakota you can get your license at 14 and a half oh so that's way too young it was I'll like right in the fall it. so i i was able to learn how to drive over the summer luckily otherwise if i learned to drive in the winter been a couple fender benders yeah. i'm got a little bit of a lead foot you yeah. know? it's uh <laughs> I start uh, get my foot on that accelerator. I feel like Dominic Toretto in a Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> so um, I live my life a quarter mile at the time. Everyone knows. Everyone who knows me knows that that I live my life a quarter mile at the time. So, man, I didn't know how cool you were till we were having yeah, this it's conversation. Pretty sick. Right it's now. pretty sick. Yeah. So, um, and before we close out this podcast, because we're gonna close it out here. I want to remind everyone who's got a truck that's maybe not like a you know larger truck. Get some sandbags in the bed of that truck so it's not slipping and sliding around too much. 100%. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, if you need salt for the water softener, just get buy extra now. Yep. And you'll keep use it, it in there. And keep then... it in there. And then come, come the spring, well, come summer. Uh, that's when you can be safe. Pull it out, put it in the basement. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Absolutely. Good advice, Miles. Well, and you can get that at the Fleet Farm, by the Fleet way. Fleet Farm. <laughs> Well, folks, it's been another amazing bellied up podcast. Thank you all for listening. We appreciate everyone calling in. We appreciate everyone following. This has been awesome. It's been fun so far. And, you know, I can't wait to see where it goes. No, I all can't I know either. Is I'm, I, all I know is find another bar, grab your belly, and belly on up belly to the bar, up. baby. If there's a bar, we'll belly it. 
there is a bar and you got a belly. We're figuring it out. We'll figure it out. All right. Love you See guys. you guys. See you in the next episode.